Coming up, going through boot camp with Canada's National Police Force. Bringing comfort when disaster strikes. And this Bernese mountain dog helps keep a tradition alive. Canadian Mounted Police, a Canadian icon. As Canada's national police force, the RCMP requires top-notch working partners. RCMP German Shepherds are the creme de la creme of Canadian police dogs. Only a select few make the grade. At the RCMP training center in Innisfail, Alberta, dogs are put through a rigorous training program. Kaiser, a two-year-old German Shepherd, is a new recruit. Constable Chris Brinnan has been training him for three intense months to prepare for Kaiser's big test. Less than half the dogs pass the training to become RCMP dogs. Right now, Kaiser's showing a lot of potential to make it through. Not all dogs make it. It's a very low percentage of dogs that make it because there's so many demands put on them. The dogs must excel at obedience, tracking, retrieving, criminal apprehension, searches, as well as narcotic and bomb detection. Every day, they're being put to the test, working on their natural instincts. We're just trying to develop those natural instincts. There's no other dogs that I know in the police service that's capable of doing what we expect of our police service dogs. Because Canada is such a big country and the RCMP are often stationed in remote areas, Kaiser has to be multi-skilled. He may be the only police dog for 2,500 square miles. Trainer Sergeant Patrick McIsaac says RCMP dogs have to be versatile geniuses, able to succeed in all areas or profiles. If you were to equate that in human terms, we're looking for a human being that is capable of being an Olympic athlete, that is capable of being an academic scholar, and is also perhaps a concert level musician. In this exercise, Kaiser must come down one step at a time, but only on Chris's command. He's a good student, but to pass, Kaiser must excel in every profile. If Kaiser doesn't pass, he'll most likely get sold to another police force because they'll find one of his profiles that he's, he's good at. They'll, uh, they'll be able to put him to work? No. In his eagerness to please, sometimes he doesn't wait for Chris's command. A strong bond is a vital part of Kaiser and Chris's partnership. In between the bouts of intense training, the pair relax. When I pick Kaiser up every morning for training, it's like a rodeo match. He's, I walk through that door and uh, the other guys will walk ahead and he'll be waiting and waiting and as soon as he sees me come through that door, he just the switch goes on and he starts jumping and squealing and, because he knows it's time for the two of us to go have fun. And, uh, and I feel the same way. I'm very excited and eager every morning I get up to uh, get out there and start training. There's nothing I could imagine doing other than spending time with him during the day. Except with my wife and child. <laughs> German Shepherds are bred for intelligence, physical endurance, and trainability. They have superior scenting capabilities and have been used as police dogs for over a century. Tracking will be a key part of Kaiser's exam. Not only must he be able to track suspects, but he must also sniff out objects and forensic evidence. Tracking is based on the dog's prey drive. He has to want to follow that scent and find whatever it is that he's looking for at the end. It's so mentally and physically challenging to the dog. And they'll become fatigued and that's the biggest thing that gets dogs removed from the program. Kaiser will also be tested for obedience and aggression. 
a lot of our profiles are based on uh, obedience. There's obedience in basically everything we do, and that includes in aggression. Uh, you can have a, an aggressive dog, but he's not going to use that aggression until he's been given a command to. Chris has to pass his own fitness test to keep up with Kaiser and be prepared for anything. I have no doubt in my mind that there'll become a day if we get through the program that he'll save my life. I hope he feels the same way about me. I'll never send him into a situation where I'm not willing to go myself. The months of intense training are over. Up to 70% of the dogs don't okay, make Chris, it to this, this level. level Sergeant McIsaac will do Kaiser's evaluation. Test. Your area is this short grass field that you see in front of you. Uh, we have several articles that we have placed here for a 24-hour period, and you and Kaiser are required to locate uh, several of them. Remember to use the wind and uh, your pattern to your advantage, and good luck. Let's go, bud. We'll go search. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, bud. Search. Let's go. Back. Good boy, Kaiser! What do you got? Good dog! Go boy! Let's go, buddy. Heel. Next profile, tracking. Kaiser has to follow a suspect scent. Sit, buddy. Sue. Sue. There he is! Hey, Kaiser! And Dog now to, uh, for the building search. Are you okay in there, Wade? It's fine. Okay, great. We're going to leave you for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes for the scent cone to develop, and then uh, we'll have Chris and Kaiser come in and find you. Kaiser has to find the hidden suspect Search. in this cavernous warehouse. Search, Kaiser. Search. Where is he? Where is he? Is he in there? Oh, you got that guy. Come on, Kaiser. Let's go. This way, buddy. We can get him this way, buddy. We can get him this way. Okay, we know you're in there. I want you to stand up and show me your hands. Or the dog's coming in. Where's he, Betty? Where's that guy? Get him out of there, Kaiser. Come on, buddy. Get in there. Where is he? Where is he, buddy? Hey, come on, Kaiser. Go, boy! Good job, Kaiser. Get him out of there. Good boy! You get him out, bud. Good boy! Oh, sir, great job. Good, good job. Good job, Chris. That's a good building search. Nice. Kaiser passed. Now, his prestigious career as a police dog for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police can begin. But I look forward to a lot of years with him. Couldn't ask for a better partner. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Tikva, a two-year-old Kazon, is a member of the Hope Crisis Response Team. She lives in Oregon, but was called to New York to work as a Red Cross dog at the World Trade Center disaster. Over here. Tikva's owner, Cindy Ellers, is an animal Stay. behaviorist. She founded the Oregon-based Hope Crisis Response Team. It's a volunteer organization that provides animal-assisted emotional ready? support to people in crisis or disaster situations. Tikva can tell who needs her help. She picks up on like body that? language cues and approaches people sitting alone who exhibit distress or withdrawn behavior. Cindy and Tikva were one of the four teams the Red Cross called to Ground Zero. They provided emotional support for families of the missing, as well as for the firefighters, police officers, and emergency workers.
I was relieved to be able to have her to work with because I knew she knew what she was doing. We've been training teak folks since she was nine weeks old. She knew the people and she knew what they needed. Karen Soika is a professional crisis counselor. She'd been working at Ground Zero for a week before Tikva and Cindy arrived. When I got there, um, it was still very chaotic and uh, very horrific. My responsibility was the rescue workers at Ground Zero. At that time, there was anywhere between two to 4,000 of them working at any given moment. They were amazing because they're very stoic. They were very traumatized and had to continue to do the work they were doing. The mentality was, we don't need help. You know, psychologically, we're fine. We're tough. Leave us alone. And it was very obvious. Their defenses were very strong. But when the workers saw Tikva, something happened. Tikva would come along, and they would react. And their eyes would light up, or they would smile. So the men, it was OK for them to approach Tikva and pet her and talk to her. And in doing that, with me being with her, and they knew I was a mental health worker, then they could talk with me without losing face. I mean, it just was amazing. Kazans have long, thick, fluffy coats. Their small face and pointed ears give them a fox-like expression. They are gentle, devoted to their owners, and especially love children. She kissed you. That was a kiss. Lyndon Harris is the pastor of St. Paul's Chapel, right by Ground Zero. He saw Tikva in action. We started a relief ministry at St. Paul's Chapel, and uh, one of the ministries we were excited to, to see happen in our vicinity is the ministry of the therapy dogs. And uh, therapy dogs can make a huge difference, just to bring a smile to the face of someone who has been digging for the remains of human life is a really important job to do. After the World Trade Center crisis, Cindy and Tikva began giving workshops to train more dogs and handlers for emergency situations. Today, they're in Rockland County, New York. Tikva is showing these dogs how to remain calm in a crisis. The workshop familiarizes the dogs with the sights, sounds, and smells they'd encounter in an emergency, so they won't be nervous when called to a disaster site. This high-pitched whistle indicates a firefighter is losing his air supply. The dogs are trained to remain calm. Tikva was down there too for a couple of weeks. When were you down there? Pretty much. The whole time? Yeah. After September 11th, Tikva also gave comfort to families of the victims. Nancy Zuckerman's husband died in the World Trade Center. Tikva kind of uh, saved my life. She was a little miracle for me. Seeing her is very, very powerful. Uh, when I was waiting to go on the ferry to go visit my husband there, I remember just sitting there, and then all of a sudden, Cindy and Tikva appear, and they find us, and this little dog jumps in my lap, and it's licking my face, and I start crying, and she just felt, I'm sure, just all of my emotions, because she was just wouldn't stop licking my face. It was just uh, so beautiful. It's just beautiful. How are you? How are you? Yeah. Nancy is a professional massage therapist. She wanted to give something back to Tikva. 
I could see that this dog's energy had dissipated because she was giving so much. When people, you know, embrace and if they're crying or if they're feeling emotion, I believe dogs feel that. So you could tell that she was taking in too. So she just looked tired. And she laid down and she was so exhausted. So I was massaging her and I just helping her relax, I thought. And I felt like she was responding. I think she really felt it. And I think it was making her feel more peaceful and relaxed. I just want everyone to know that how special they are and how special they've been to me. And that we are now new friends and we will continue to be friends. And that's the other part of what's beautiful in this whole event. She said that she saw Tikva as a sign to give her hope in that time. I know that that moment helped Nancy be able to get through many more moments that were very hard after that day. Even in the midst of this disaster, there is beauty. <laughs> Cindy is still touched by Tikva's effect on emergency workers at Ground Zero. I did not realize the impact that we would have until we left. It was very hard for me to leave, emotionally, because they loved Tikva by that time. They were starting to ask, well, are we gonna see her tomorrow? They were starting to accept her as their comrade. This dairy farm in the little village of Fielbringen, just outside Bern, has been in the Bigler Weiss family for over a hundred years. The tradition of breeding Bernese mountain dogs started here in 1932 for a very practical reason. Since the 19th century in this part of Switzerland, large farm dogs have been used to pull milk carts to the local dairy, where Emmental cheese was made each day. By Marguerite's side walks four-year-old Macho. He's the head dog and her favorite. Macho and his partner Nasha love their job, but unless Marguerite's family keeps the tradition alive, Macho may be the last of a dying breed. It wasn't my intention to cultivate a tradition. I was simply looking for some work for my dogs. To drive the milk to the dairy is the most suitable work for my dogs on this farm. I would have liked to use the dogs twice a day, morning and evening. But in the morning, there's too much milk and it's too heavy for the wagon. So in the morning, we take the tractor. In fact, Marguerite prefers dogs to the tractor. The dogs don't have a battery. Every tractor has a battery and sometimes in the winter, the battery dies, whereas the dogs can always pull. Macho watches anxiously as Marguerite goes off to the dairy. He doesn't like her to be out of sight for long. Macho loves to follow Marguerite around the farm as she does her chores. The large Bernese mountain dog was named for the fact that it was originally bred from dogs found in the mountainous countryside around Bern, Switzerland. Their strength makes them good draft animals. Their thick black coats have rust and white markings. These gentle and affectionate dogs are good with children and other animals. I have a very good relationship with Macho, especially because he was born on this farm. Oh, I love my Macho very much. He stays by my side all day, and, and he always wants to be close to me. I'm sure he likes me a lot, too. Twice a day, the cows are brought in from the fields for milking. 
Marguerite's son Bruno is in charge. While in the milking shed, the cows are fed a lovely sweet meal of fresh cut grass. As always, Macho is by Marguerite's side. Finally, the milking is finished. It's the moment the dogs have been waiting for all day. The dogs enjoy the work. They want to work. My dogs, they don't want to sleep the whole day. Even when the cart is heavy, they like pulling it. They love to work. Macho's daily milk run is an event that catches people's attention. I am the person who takes in the milk. Every evening I'm happy when the dogs come because it's an old tradition that's almost been lost. We know each other very well. It's a beautiful reminder to me of the past. Macho and Nasha run home on their own. In most cases, the use of dogs to pull carts stopped because of more efficient farming methods. And increased traffic on the roads made it dangerous for them. Although these reasons haven't deterred Marguerite, that may not be the case for her son Bruno and his wife Brigitta. They took over the farm two years ago. Well, um, my mother-in-law, when she gets retired, I don't know how we go on with the dogs and the tradition of going to the dairy. But um, I, I think about it and uh, maybe my husband will continue together with me so we could do it, but we don't know yet. When Marguerite's one-year-old granddaughter Nadine has grown up, the family tradition of using Bernie's mountain dogs to pull milk carts to the dairy may be just a memory. Unless, of course, if it were up to hard-working macho to decide. <laughs> <laughs>